This is a how-to video for Pinnacle Software. The focus of this video is describes how to search for and verify single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs. The primary application for this workflow is targeted or enriched protein screening and characterization and specifically can be done in the antibody screening which can be found here in the preset workflows or protein variant analysis where the targeted protein digest under study is relatively pure and there's a low background matrix. The video will be described are broken up into two aspects. The first is how to set up and search for SNPs and the second is how to review the data for SNP verification in the sequence. The way that we would set this up is we would select either the antibody screening and quantitation or protein variant and in this case we select the antibody screening once you select your preset workflow, all of the functions that are needed to be set by the user are opened here on the right hand side. And we simply start at the top and work our way down. Where the first thing is, is to select your raw file and you can just simply grab your specific raw file. Next, you would grab your database, which is in the form of a sequence for the protein. And this can be added in from a FASTA uh, file or you can just copy and paste the sequence. Following the selection of the raw file and the knowledge base from which to index to search the raw, uh, raw data, you would specify your digestion enzyme, so if there's a primary or a secondary, missed cleavage allowances, and if you want to search for partial cleavage. Then the as specific an aspects for the protein screening. In this case, we select SNP. For this experiment, we're going to do it without the considerations of, of N-linked glycopeptides or dynamic modifications. And then, of course, you would set your for your file reading, what is your resolution expectations, whether it's high resolution in the MS as well as the mass tolerance. And once you've set these, uh, few parameters you would just simply simply hit apply and it begins processing the data and it in this case for Fetuan which we've used it takes about three minutes to complete once the data is completed this is what the review would look like so if we click on the protein itself again bovine Fetuan we have the view of the table on the left chromatographic view showing all possible peptides as well as the index. So again in this case there's about 190 peptides or variants that it's found and you can see all of them are crammed in here but of course we can zoom in to specific regions and uh, the, the key only shows those particular peptides that are eluding in this particular time window. And then of course we have the mass spectrum below. So we can expand to get the list of possible peptides and of course the scoring is based on presence or absence of a matched MS2 and the number of fragment ions within the mass uh, product ion spectrum that's associated with each one of these particular sequence. The specific SNP is shown here in the square brackets at the site of the particular SNP. If we want to review a possible SNP, we take an example if we would always start with the unmodified form of the peptide if there is one and of course once we click on the specific peptide the chromatographic view shows is now changed to represent that specific peptide and we can click on any one of these blue triangles so the in this case we've got one charge date for this particular peptide that's highlighted and we see the two most abundant precursor isotopes shown here in the overlaid XIC and of course we can evaluate the isotopic distribution for the precursor by just simply hovering our cursor in the um, peak area and this represents a real-time isotopic analysis so you can evaluate at the leading and the tailing edge. The blue triangles simply represent uh, MS2 spectra that contain this particular precursor charge state. The down arrows represent poor matching of the expected MS2. Up triangles represent a good match. 
if we hover over a specific triangle it just simply tells you that it, the MS2 represents the plus 2 charge date and the fragmentation mode is HCD. If we click on this the product ion spectrum shows up below with the annotated peaks. And again for this particular case we've got two different possibilities and the two comparisons that we'll show um, are simply the where a threonine is replaced by a serine so it's a mass difference of minus 14 Daltons compared to the isoleucine for a valine which is again the same mass difference so the key is that where does this mass shift occur and so again we're going to compare both of these to the native sequence which is shown already and uh, so if we first of all just click on the second option here where the, the threonine is switched to the serine and we are going to show the multiplot and we click on one of the up triangles for the same charge state and we begin to look at the now comparative product ion spectrum and again the blue triangles represents common fragment ions observed between both product ion mass spectra and the red triangles represent those fragment ions that are unique so again the matching at this particular site of modification which is at the end terminus doesn't appear to line up as well as if we would click on uh, the isoleucine to valine and again add yet another product ion spectrum we can now see that we have again differences between our spectrum and if we just kind of start zooming in on specific regions we can see that the Y9 from the base to our option here where the isoleucine to valine is now switched and if we hover over the Y9 we can see in fact that the sequence now shows with the red font in the sequence where the Y9 goes up to and of course contains our isoleucine so we have an increased confidence that this is in fact a better match than uh, the first option which was the threonine to serine at the end terminus this ends this particular video